Hi, my name is Brian and this is yet another installment in my series on how to make a steel aquarium stand. And I've repositioned the camera so that I can shoot while I weld. The welder is over here and the stand is here and what I'm going to do today is attach the legs to the uh, stand. And uh, so let's get started. Hope you enjoy my videos. If you have any questions, um, you can always uh, you know, leave a comment or better yet, send me an email. Um, Brian at nanohawk.com and I do eventually respond to emails. Um, and uh, for those of you that are just finding this video, I have started using the playlist feature on YouTube to organize the videos to make it easier to find content when there's multiple pieces to it. Um, and uh, I hope that you, uh, you know, check those out and check out some of my other videos. So I'm going to use a level to check that my legs are roughly straight up and down. It doesn't really matter if they're perfect or not and the reason it doesn't matter is because you know it's steel. Once it's welded together it ain't going anywhere and um, but I want to try and get it pretty close. So this is where my magnetic holders come in play and you know these are a little difficult to see um, but they'll they'll go in here and they'll help me get this uh, in position and hold it in position and then anytime you move it you always want to double check it pretty good pretty good so and what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the bubble 90% in the middle of the the lines that's good enough for an aquarium stand. Um, so uh, I've got it where I need it, and I'm going to go ahead and tack weld it. As always, anytime you weld, make sure you have the proper safety equipment, which includes a uh, mask, eye protection, hand protection, some sort of a UV shielding clothing, as well as uh, something to keep the sparks off you, and good work shoes. Alright, so that's good enough. At this point the uh, leg is tack welded and just to show you how strong the tack weld is, I can actually move this whole thing around just with those four little welds. And um, you know, before I'm done I'm going to fill in all of this so that it's a complete and solid weld and that fuses this piece of metal to this piece of metal and that's the beauty of welding. You know, if you've never done it but you have the opportunity Go ahead and try it. The worst you'll do is screw the metal up. Um, for me, it's, it's sort of fascinating. It's like using a hot glue gun for steel. All right, so that's mostly it. And this one's as bad as they get, but I'm gonna go ahead and tack it in and hope it doesn't shift on me. All right, so at that point, that one's tack welded in. And the first question is, will my torch reach? Yep. Managed to move it without bothering it, so I'm going to go ahead and weld it in place. So you may have noticed on that one 
that uh, I pulled the magnet off and then I made the fourth weld. And the reason I did that is I was already in position. I was comfortable and so it was easier to move my uh, brace knowing that it probably wasn't going anywhere than it was for me to reposition and potentially find myself in an uncomfortable position where I wouldn't be able to make a good weld. So the next step is to measure the distance between these two and figure out where the piece that goes in the middle is. And I am 80 and a half inches. Eighty and a half inches. <laughs> Surprise. So uh, one of the things I've done that you, some of you may not have noticed is I've set my posts in by four inches. And I'm doing this for two reasons and I'll come down here and kind of show you what I'm doing. The first, first reason I'm doing this is I've got all this crap here where these two pieces meet. And if I was to put this over here and weld it in place, I'd have to contend with this crap. And there's only two ways to deal with it. One is to brace it and fill it in, the other is to grind it off, and I'd probably have to do a combination of both, which would waste a lot of my time. Now, in some instances, you want to grind this off just because it looks pretty, and, you know, I probably will. But, from a fabrication perspective, if I move this in, I'm a lot more likely to be able to line this up without a whole lot of fight. The other thing that factors into this is that the span between the two posts gets reduced a little bit. And with steel, it's all about span. So what I've essentially done is caused four inches at each end to be cantilevered over the, over the other post. And then I've reduced this to, you know, it's 40 and a half minus two inches. So 38 and a half inch span. Well, a 38 and a half inch span can carry more weight than a 48 inch span can. So this is a way of reinforcing or strengthening my structure by just simply making the spans a little shorter. Um, you know, one of these posts can probably support the entire aquarium. Steel has an amazing compressive strength. Um, but we're mainly concerned with elasticity. How much is it going to bend when we put 3,000 pounds on it? And what the answer we want in reef keeping is not. It's not going to bend, or it's going to bend so little that it's difficult to measure it. And that's what I think we're going to get with this steel stand, and that's why I'm building a steel stand. So, without further ado, let me show you the next piece of this, which is marking where the center posts are going to go. And for that, I'm going to use a screwdriver because I can scratch the metal like that, and it leaves a nice hard mark. The beauty of this is I can do it with pretty much any sharp object and it's not going to rub off like chalk will, it's not $5 a pen like a paint marker might be. So this is my preferred method and it's, it's something called scribing. So let me scribe this where I'm going to put my posts. And so I want it at 40 and a quarter. So I got that one scribed. That one's scribed. I actually want to come back to 38 and mark. And the reason I'm marking 38 is that's where I want the edge of the post to be. All right, just like before, I'm going to use a magnetic brace to get this exactly where I want it. Then I'm going to check it with a level. We're good that way. We're good that way, so it's time to weld. All right, that one's good to go. All right, so all six of my legs are tack welded in place. All right, so my next step is to go ahead and weld all of these legs, or finish the welds, because the first step is to tack weld, and the second weld, the step is to fill in all my welds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think I'm just gonna start right where I'm at.
it's always important to be in the right position. real good. I'm going to put a little more material in this corner. And you know what? I've got to turn this anyway, so It'll be a lot more comfortable if I have this turned. So these are good, but I gotta do there and there. So I got a couple welds to do. All right, so uh, I've repositioned the camera so you can see the welding a little bit better, but you can't really see me that well, so that's all right. So the specific issue that I'm solving is there's just a little bit more gap here than I would like. And so the way that I wanna solve that is by welding and letting the material fall into the crack. That way I can build it up and bridge it if I need to. Uh, if I was to try and do this at an angle, it would just be a really difficult weld and I'd get a lot of hot stuff sprayed on me and uh, I don't like to get burned. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to flip the stand over again so I can get to the what's now hanging right down. So I want to keep my cable out of harm's way, so I'm just going to actually take it off. So at this point I've got it flipped over. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna reposition the camera and I'm gonna get geared up and we're gonna weld these last three welds. And uh, then I'm gonna stand up and see what it looks like in place before I put the feet on it. All right, so I thought I had three welds and I actually have four. I've gotta do this one right here. So it's always a good idea to look around and make sure none of your sparks have caused a fire. Not had it happen to me personally, but it's very possible. The uh, sparks that come off the welding gun are about 3,000 degrees. <clears throat> Alright, so the next thing to do is to stand this up and uh, see what it looks like. Oh wow, that got heavy. So the next step is to stand this up 
and uh, it's actually a little bit on the heavy side. So, I'm wondering. <laughs> okay, it's really heavy. I think I can deadlift it. You gotta use your legs. Um, so what I've done is I've jammed a pipe wrench under there so that I can get my fingers under there. And this is usually how I hurt my back. All right, so. All right, let me reposition the camera again. 